Okay, we've had a look at the um, satellite uh, imagery for this area. And we'll now start to have a look at the, the elevation model data. Now, elevation data is also stored as a raster model. And here we've got the shuttle radar topographic mapping data, uh, SRTM. So this is radar imagery that was collected from the shuttle, I believe, in 2001. Um, we also have data from um, PDO. And I'm not exactly sure what the derivation is or what the provenance rather is of this data. And we also have Cartasat, which is an Indian remote sensing satellite. And here we are. And so we can now the difference between each of these different elevation models is to do with the accuracy of the data. Now that's equally to do with the spatial cell size on the ground and also the error um, associated with the, the height estimation. So if we scroll through each of the different data sets we should get an indication of the changes in um, spatial resolution. So here we have the DEM from Cartasat and we can pick up the drainage channels quite clearly and in quite a refined way. Um, we're then going to move down to the PDO data which is at 40 meter resolution and yeah we can still see the major characteristics of the drainage pattern but we can't see the, the finer tendrils of the, the smaller rills and gullies. And then when we go down to the SRTM it's a much blockier data set because the cell resolution is, is larger. Um, the DM data from the SRTM is actually surprisingly accurate here, um, so we, we have good quality data across the board. Um, now there's a variety of things you can do with your um, elevation data, uh, which is to create contours for example, or look at slope. Uh, type or aspect type, you know, which direction the landscape is facing or elevation. And so they can become very important for when you're calculating derivatives uh, about what's happening in the landscape. So it's possible to look at solar illumination models and see how that leads through to heat capacity in the landscape. Because if you're in a uh, a cell or an area which is mainly facing the sun, you heat, you know, it heats up more during the day. And so, f if we are interested in shade loving animals or shade loving plants, we can determine which areas of the landscape are more in shade than others, or which areas of the landscape build up a larger heat capacity during the day. Um, and but equally we can look at how landscapes form. We can look at topographic variations, saddles and plateaus in the landscape. All of these are, uh, again, potentially very important for, for environmental subdivisions. But I, I noticed as we were loading up the data that we have a variety of um, data that's already extant. So here's some 20 meter contours probably going to take oh yeah reasonable while to load so again we have contour data and we have similar data as well from the um, SRTM but it covers a much oh no we don't have the SRTM but we do have it for PDO at 50 meter intervals okay and we'll open that up right and we can 
say there is a you know, generally good relationship between the two extracted layers um, but it, it's you get the impression particularly in respect of, of fluvial morphology that the cartasat is a, a much better interpretation. Okay, so that's just overlaying some um, DEM data.